It's beautiful. Yeah, the old photographs of this, this uh, in the dark hours of the morning, it's just really... Uh, the opportunity to watch that air show uh, and then I highly suggest that I've tried every way you know. all right so which way are we gonna go today today so yesterday yesterday we started out exactly the same right here I guess most days we do All right, it's all it's always an adventure. It's always an adventure for me. I hope it's uh, an adventure for everybody else. So I forgot to charge my bike last night. And uh, luckily I had my my other battery was charged, so I had to swap it out. And the funny thing is that uh, I had just taped up, I just taped up the battery that was rattling around yesterday at work. Uh, is my phone going off? I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's 558, it's about 60 degrees. I think I'm acclimating to the cold mornings because, I mean, it feels chilly for sure, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. Like, uh, I felt hot. Like, I almost didn't wear two, two jackets when I was getting ready. I was like, I was getting hot inside my house. I was like, oh man. I put my hood on and I started feeling that uh, my, you know, I have that hood covering that covers my face and my head, which is actually really helpful. But I started feeling claustrophobic, you know, and then I put my backpack on. I had all my gear on. I was like, uh, I, sometimes I get that feeling I feel claustrophobic and it's like, ah, oh, I can't have anything. Uh, I felt like taking everything off. I was, free, I was freaking out. But finally I got outside and it felt a little cooler, so I started to relax a little bit. So we got a car. Nothing in our lane here. So I guess, I don't know. I guess I'll just do a regular route. We'll just, uh, Take, uh, we're on Chapman right now, and uh, you know we started off on Tustin. We're on Chapman. We're gonna head to Maine, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I definitely have problems with. Uh, I was going to turn into the library, but I was blocked by a homeless person. I definitely, uh, 
I don't like a lot of layers of clothing and I don't like uh, tight clothing. So I have a I have a couple of pairs of jeans that are they're not tight, you know, but I rarely wear them. And when I do, oh man, I can bear I can't handle it. Like cuz my work pants are uh, you know baggy. I wear I like to wear baggy clothing. I can't stand tight t-shirts and tight tight pants. homeless activity over here okay so the day before I think we went up Glacelle and Grand yesterday I went up uh, Tustin yeah I guess it's time for a uh, Main Street So we're on uh, Ma uh, Maple right now in downtown Orange, heading towards the uh, Metrolink station slash Okta slash that's it. Amtrak doesn't stop here. So Amtrak skips Orange. They only stop in uh, Santa Ana and um, Anaheim. This is like Tel Happy's uh, California Incline right here. Except a little uh, shorter. ran over a piece of uh, French bread. There was a big loaf of French bread on, not a big loaf, but a big French loaf on the ground. There used to be a guy that would park, he lived down here in his car. And he would park right here up against this side and he, uh, was always working on his car. It was a decent little car. Like, I think he was freshly homeless, but he would, yeah, he would be right here every morning and just talking to himself, cussing up a storm. He'd have his car all taken apart, all his stuff all over the ground. All right. All right. Oh, I see an alley. Let's go through there. I've been through it before, but only, I think only once or twice. It's kind of crazy. Oh, jeez, I went right past it. So there's this one here next to the tracks, but there's another one. Maybe I haven't been on this other one. I've been on this one. Let's check it out. Ooh. Oh, it's 
speed bump. Hold on tight. This must be lemon that we're on. Almond. Lemon goes the other direction. Batavia. Oh man. Dude, my life is a grind sometimes, it feels like. So lucky I have this uh this bike ride to do every day. Okay, let's cut through St. Joseph's. We're not going to stop and look like last time. But Just cut through here. Oh, bunny. Just ran over that poor little rabbit. Oh, look at a pa. Oh, man. Hi, raccoon. Hey, buddy. Hello. Hello. Don't worry. So it's tripping on me right now. So I bet you people feed it. The way it kind of just stopped and like started kind of sniffing into the air. this that dead ends right there so we went through here a few couple weeks ago I guess it's beautiful yeah the old photographs of this this uh, hospital or whatever you want to call it this was all cleared out all the way to Maine and there was palm trees that lined this whole this whole driveway are the palms still here? No. That's a shame, they should have kept the palm trees. All right, so we're to Main Street. Pretty getting pretty foggy. Got a car right behind me. Hopefully they, they trigger this light. That would be nice. Wow, look at how foggy it is. So, uh, yeah, that video from uh, From Monday on the creek trail was not nearly as you know as crazy 
as it was for me. So the camera has the low light enhancement. So that helped. And but for me it was a whole different experience. So it kind of didn't it didn't translate over to the video because I had you know, like I said it's just like when you're in a car and you have your high beams on in the fog. I mean, there's no low beam for this light. I can point it down, but it's still going over my eyes. So it was reflecting off all the moisture in the air, so I couldn't see hardly anything. That's why I was going so slow. Then I go back and look at the footage, and the footage is all lit up, you know? So that was kind of a strange video because, yeah, what I was talking about wasn't uh, really happening on the, on the footage. I mean, I guess it was. So we're on Main Street riding past uh, Main Place Mall. Very uh, reminiscent of last year at this time. When I pretty much took this route every day. This one and the Tustin route, I only had like two routes. Maybe three. Well, I would put it on pedal assist five right here and just pedal assist five the whole way, it seemed like. This battery's already uh, low. My backup battery. See. Well, we've gone five miles, so yeah, we're still at 50, 50 volts. Definitely need to pick it up going over the five freeway here. Lots of bumps. Yeah, when I first started riding, all the, these little details were so, uh, just so cool to me. Like, just this intersection, I can remember, you know, I was riding, you know, I'd ride in the street and then right here, I wasn't as comfortable in the, in the street. I guess when I very first started, before I got more confident in the street. And uh, I would trip out on riding on these sidewalks. Those bushes right there, there's people that live in there. There's, so there's those, I don't know if it's gonna, if you'll see it on the footage, but there's a planter bed right there. And uh, there's a little, a little cave. And off to my right, there's always somebody sleeping right there. But all these little, all these details, I was just very caught up in, in this area. It's kind of strange. I mean, it's just so, it's so simple. It's just, uh, I mean, it's just buildings and trees. 
but just the new new perspective of riding a bike through here every day in the dark hours of the morning it was just really uh, I really enjoyed it I still do I mean, I feel like I'm borderline obsessed with this commuting business. Yeah, you would think that I would be getting burned out, but man, I feel like I could always do this. We cut through here. We went to both sides already this week. So here's the old dead 99 cent store. All right. I don't know why I'm stopping. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. scanning some activities Here, these are all parking spots, but no, there's no storefronts right here. And there's parking on the other side of the alley. So even in the daytime on this side, there's, there's not any, uh, there's not any, um, there's no cars parked right here. This could very easily be a bike lane. And you could even run the bike lane, boom, over the sidewalk right here. Have a partition so it's still a sidewalk. Look at how wide these sidewalks are. So it narrows up a little bit right here. So right here, you'd have to maybe stop the bike lane. I don't know, I think it would be kind of cool like to get hired by Santa Ana to uh, yeah to ride all these routes and be like a uh, you know, be a resource for for e-bike commuting routes yeah I mean I'm not a uh, I don't know who maps that kind of stuff out. I can't think of the, the word for it right now. But, uh, surveyor, are they the ones that do it? I don't know, civil engineer. Could sell my 
sell my footage to the city. Look at these guys doing painting. That they use to build. Oh wow. That's gonna be awesome. So I don't know what business that is right there, but they're uh, they put in some windows. So it's like you can see inside of the structure. I'll have to check that out. I'll have to remember that. All right, so we're to First Street. Uh, we're going to need to cross. Let's go ahead and jump over this way real quick. Smoking on that tin foil. Whoa, lots of glass. So over here, this alley over here, I rode up. Guess it would be on the video I just published this morning. So it would have been my ride home on Monday. This alley over here was activated. This one. So this is a very specific, uh, very specific gang territory right here. So on this route, like when I take the Pacific electric bike path, which is just a couple of blocks to my left, to the east, there's three, uh, three major, uh, Gangs, gang zones that I go through. Two of them are very, uh, very old. And then there's one in the middle. I don't know when. So there's the one here starting on First Street. And then coming up here, it changes to... Uh, This is a dead end right here. So this is where the alley dead ends. And then, uh, yeah, this area right here is very, very active in the, in the mornings. But yeah, starting from First Street all the way to uh, Dyer, that whole section is gang territory but yeah I, I don't know I think like I just don't think it's as crazy as it used to be yeah I think the 90s the 90s the late 80s early 90s or all the 90s it's starting yeah starting in the late 80s through the 90s 
think gangs were pretty uh, pretty turned up. So yeah, you don't see people posted up. Everybody's uh, everybody's uh, inside on the internet, internet banging, YouTube banging. But yeah, going through uh, going through my neighborhood in the '90s, it was like. Uh, it was, uh, you know, you go through an alley in my neighborhood, you know, you're going to, you're going to go past, like, it was dangerous, but luckily, uh, you know, I was from those neighborhoods, so I never got... Probably from when I was 14 until I was 18, I spent pretty much running, running amok through the, through my town. And I was out like every day. And uh, yeah, I never got, I never got jumped or beat up or robbed like I think you know people just are used people are just used to you know you're that's your neighborhood and they know that so they don't really they don't really mess with you I was just uh, just another kid in the neighborhood you know, but I played uh, my freshman and sophomore year. I pay, played sports, and uh, so I I, uh, I played sports with a lot of people that were from all the different areas in the neighborhood. So I lived, you know, I lived right by downtown. This little town called Porterville, and. Uh, Yeah, you know, I'd walk to school and ride skateboards. We we're always out running around. But I, you know, when you play sports with these guys, you get to know them. So yeah, you just it, was, it wasn't too bad. And we looked like yeah, you know, I rode skateboards, so that was the thing. We were street street skaters. I had a couple other dudes that lived in my neighborhood that I'd roll around, around with. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we kind of assumed that, uh, that style of dressing, you know, we, we wore Ben Davis's, we wore flannels, uh, you know, chain wallets, beanie hats, Pendleton's, you know, so we kind of looked the part. That's what was strange, but everybody knew we were just skaters.
I'm tired like this, it's better for me to uh, stay out of the street. I feel okay, but you gotta you gotta be uh, on point. Six thirty-two. Oh my God, I'm gonna be late. Got eight minutes. That's not gonna happen. And the clerk, the clerk at 7-Eleven looked like a... Looks like he, he might hang out with the guys that uh, hang out on the side there. Maybe uh, maybe one of them went in, went in there and took over the store. It's been a takeover. Somebody keeps, somebody keeps, uh, somebody keeps taking my shock and locking, locking my front shock. I think it, I, I think it's somebody at work.
we can make it by 6:45. We'll be good. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. It matters, but it, it doesn't. I. Uh, so this bus. Can we stay ahead of it? I'm gonna go ahead of you, buddy. So we have one car turning. So after this car turns, I can take off, I guess. And, oh, it's not one of those. It's, I thought we were gonna get the turning lane first. We can still stay ahead of the bus though. What do I know? I only do this every day. All right, let's check our voltage, 47 point. Seven. Oh my god, they're close. my bumper. So they're having the uh, Pacific Air Show in Huntington Beach. I don't know if I've talked about that yet. That's coming up starting Friday. It runs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you ever have the opportunity to watch that air show, you should do it because uh, it is amazing. So I've been to, so I don't think they have the Chino Air Show anymore. Oh, this is taking forever, here we go. Um, they have the Chino, they used to have the Chino Air Show, so that was the first air show I had ever gone to. And I don't remember how many years ago it was. We'll just guess and say seven, seven years ago maybe. And uh, I saw the F-22 Raptor. And man, that, that was just, uh, it left an impression on me and it left an impression on my oldest son, uh, who's 13 now. And, uh, So ever since then, you know, uh, we go to air shows, and uh, so I've been to uh, Miramar. We didn't go this year; it was last weekend. We just—it's—it's it's not complicated. It's just we just couldn't. We didn't have the. Uh, we didn't have the. Uh, we just couldn't go. 
unfortunately, which is really uh, unfortunate. But you know, that's just that's just the way it is sometimes. And um, so we go to Miramar. Anyway, let's get back to the Pacific Air Show. So the Pacific Air Show. You can get uh, tickets and watch it from the pier. And I think, I don't know how much the tickets, the pier tickets are. I seem to think they were $75. And then there's the, then they have a bunch of, uh, you know, higher tiers. They have like motel packages because right along Pacific Coast Highway in Huntington Beach, there's all those hotels that are, you know, eight, probably about eight stories, maybe, maybe six, maybe four, variation of those. And, uh, you know, they got that kind of business, but then there's, uh, and then there's like general admission, which is $30, which they have sectioned off the, the sand on the beach. And there's this huge strip of uh, beach, you know, that's all sectioned off. And you can you just go there and set up, set up like you're going to the beach. And it's not, there's people in that section, but it's not that crowded. Or, you don't have a lot of extra money then you just go you just go and uh, if you get there early and find parking um, you just watch you can watch from you know the back side of the beach on any of the streets you know you walk around and watch the air show but uh, It's just, uh, it's just a great idea. It brings in tons of money to the city. And uh, it's just something about seeing these, uh, these uh, jets and aircraft and the beach at the same time. It's, it's amazing. It's intense too, so if, if you've ever seen these fighter jets, they're just so powerful and they're so loud and uh, you could feel it you know, through your whole body when they fly by and if they're, if they're going like uh, doing their flybys, uh, they just rip through the sky. And if you're not ready for it, it, it's scary. It's it's scary. Like the uh, when you have groups of them, you know, like uh, like the uh, what are the ones that are the F-15s? The uh, I can't think right now. I haven't had enough sleep. Uh, the Thunderbirds. So let's say the Thunderbirds are flying there. You know, there's six jets and they're all doing, uh, you know, they're crossing each other. They're doing their tricks right in front of you, doing passes, doing all kinds of craziness. But then you can't keep your eye on all of them. And they have, they always have the four that are doing different formations and different tricks kind of in front of you. And then they have the two rogue jets that are off flying uh, out of your you lose track of them you don't know where they're at so they'll do passes where they come from they're traveling east to west where they go over the come over the hotels and if you're not ready for it you might be looking at one that's flying over the beach and the one will come ripping above you from from behind the, the hotels and Oh my God, it's crazy. Um, 
but it's gotten bigger and bigger over the last few years. So the biggest thing though is uh, that I have to emphasize if you're gonna go, parking. So parking is, is the most difficult. So uh, if you have admission tickets, it opens at nine and then you know, the show starts at 10 a.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I would get down there at eight and then you can park in one of the parking structures downtown. It's it's cheap. It's it's probably I don't know twenty bucks for the whole day maybe. Uh, and then I highly suggest that I've tried every way. You know I've I've uh, parked in uh, at a friend's house up in Huntington and and did an Uber. You can't Uber into that place. I mean you can, but it sucks. When you try to uh, Uber into the show, it's it's bad. Because um, traffic on PCH and all those side streets, and everybody's calling Ubers, it's it's a nightmare. So I would suggest going early, parking in the parking structure, and then if you need to take a little break, you can go to your car, chill for a little bit, and then go back out to the show and ear protection. You absolutely need ear protection. And that's it. Ear protection and parking. Alrighty. What time is it? Man, I'm late. Oh my God, it's 6.48. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. I don't know if this one's gonna make it onto uh, YouTube, but we'll catch you on the next one.